Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, my name is Dennis. So today we're going to do a motherboard review. So it's the ASUS Z590-P Wi-Fi. So we're going to review it, just do a quick overview of it. Uh, we're going to do an Intel build with it later on. Uh, actually probably be my next video. And we're going to go through the whole thing. Uh, it's going to be used to upgrade somebody from a very old computer to a newer computer again. So, but this one is complete rebuild, but using his old case. But for now, let's just review the motherboard and speak of its features. And uh, yeah, let's go from there. All right, so this is our motherboard that we're going to use to do a build in. So let's go over all its features, show you what it is. Of course, it comes from a SUS, and it's a Prime Z590-P Wi-Fi. has Aurora Sync. Comes with high definition or HDMI, PCIe 4.0 ready, Windows 11 ready, uh, has Intel Optane still, but well, they're phasing that out. CPU LGA 1200 support. It has the Intel chipset Z590 and supports the 11th gen processor. So let's get it out of the box and have a quick look. So opening up the box, of course, we can see our motherboard, which we'll get to last. We always want to see what comes in here. Now, this motherboard has Wi-Fi, so of course, you're going to have your antenna. Makes it a lot more convenient, uh, if depending on where you want to put it in your house. Let's get this out. Again, we will look at this later. Okay, so the other things we have in our box. We have our I.O. shield. Now, this is pretty generic, just a silver. But when you're getting a combo, uh, this is a combo Intel processor package, um, I guess they... I don't know, I guess they cheap out on this. Although it comes from a different manufacturer, so I'm not really sure why. But yeah, it's it's very generic. There's nothing spectacular, but at least it's labeled so you know what everything is. You have your user guide. Now let's see if it comes with a DVD. With all your, yes it does. With all your DVD, your drivers, all that kind of good stuff, software. Now, if it's always good to go online later on and update that. And of course it has some pamphlets. Any late revisions that they have, they'll have them on here. Okay, tech updates, all that kind of good stuff. That just didn't get out there in time. We have our M.2. There's a little spacer if you need it for your M.2. Your screws. And of course a couple SATA cables, which you're only including two. You used to always do four. But half the time I never use two. So let's get to the actual motherboard. So let's start with some of the things that we know are on the motherboard. So right here, of course, we have our M.2 PCIe 4.0. Uh, yeah, it's up to 64 gigabyte a second. So there you've got that in there. We have our graphics card slot. So again, PCIe 4.0. And you have another PCIe 4.0 over here. Uh, actually, this is PCIe PCIe 4.0 and this is 3.0 okay times 16 slots now you will of course have the Intel processor like I mentioned before so it will accommodate the 10th or 11th gen processors all right which of course supports uh, PCIe 4.0 times 16 or 8 by 8 and 4 by 4 okay and that's an 11th gen and the PCIe 3.0 times 16 basically the same thing okay so 4.0 3.0 alright your Z590 chipset as I mentioned already uh, and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for the expansion slots so for storage we have your M.2 slot here you have a second one here and you have a third one here so Lots of places for storage. Uh, it'll go up to 2280. The third slot will go up to 2210. So this one here. And uh, yeah, this one here is also uh, 22. Yep, up to 2210. So I just wanted to verify all those slots. You have four SATA ports, which are up to 6 gigabyte per second. It's pretty much a standard nowadays is 6. Uh, I'm sure that just because we're getting used to it, they'll probably change it up coming in the future. You can be quite sure. We'll go down to the DIMM slots. Okay, this will support up to 5133 megahertz. So you can't really go wrong with that. 
one of the big things I like to touch on is the audio. So you have your audio, okay, shows you your line here. So for your shielding uh, and give you a clear, crisp sound. Now, this has five times protection. Three it's referred to as, so it gives you your safe slot core. So steel reinforced here. Uh, you have surge protected networking, over voltage protection, protection. You have your stable power supply. All right, so the Digi VRAM. And of course, the stainless steel back I.O., which we already looked at. So what other unique features do we have? Well, you know what? Let's start going over them on the board. So we've got our slot. We've got our DIMMs. We've talked about the M.2s. We've talked about the PCIe. Uh, you have a couple PCIe 1 slots. Um, so PCIe, all right, 1, 2 times 16 for 2, 4, and 3, like I mentioned. You have your CMOS battery, uh, which is just a 2032. You almost never need to replace it. Depends on how long you keep it, but it's there if you need to. So I want to start going over the back side of the motherboard, which is, of course, where your Wi-Fi is going to be and all your USB ports and all that kind of stuff because people want to know, do I have enough places to plug into? Okay, so here's the back of what will be your motherboard. Uh, once you got everything on so they have the standard ps2 port for keyboard mouse combos or one or the other you have two usb 2.0s you have your display port and hdmi you have your usb type c you have usb gen 3 type 2 uh, up to 10 gigabyte a second and this is usb now this is generation 2 this is generation 1 and this is 10 this is 5 gigabyte a second you have your gigabyte uh, network and of course all your IO and this is your spiffed out followed of course by your Wi-Fi now for those of you that are interested this is 2.5 gigabyte Ethernet port okay just that's you know if you've got that kind of uh, Wi-Fi or you want to go to your network if you've got that kind of speed it'll let you get the most out of it using that so the other thing of course is our Wi-Fi Let's talk about that a little bit after we talk about our audio. So our audio is Realtek ALC 897 7.1 surround sound high def audio codex. Uh, supports jack detection, multi-streaming, front panel, jack retasking. So in other words, you can plug things in and out. Supports up to 24 bit or 192 kilohertz playback. It has your audio shielding that I pointed out. You spiffed out. You have your premium Japanese audio capacitors and dedicated audio uh, PCB layers. So getting back to the Wi-Fi, of course, it has Intel's Wi-Fi 6, which is the latest standard pretty much. Although I've heard somebody say that they've gone beyond that, almost up to 8 now, which that's news to me because I had no idea that was even available. Maybe it's just not available in the market, but they're trying it out. So stay tuned for that. You have 2x2, two two, basically dual, uh, dual band. Wi-Fi 6 supports up uh, all the way compatible to 802.11a up to the most current AX. It's pretty good actually. Uh, has your 2.4 or 5 gigahertz frequency bands for the dual band, and it also has support for Bluetooth version 5 or later as updates become available. So let's move on to this side of the motherboard. So again, we've got our SATA ports. You have your RGB. Okay, it's always four pin if it's RGB, it has 12 volt on the left. So you make sure you plug it in right. And then we get to, we have a fan here, USB 3, couple USB ports, uh, another COM port. You have addressable RGB because you see there's three pins. So that's five volt. And then you have your audio, which is AAFP. So that's where your audio is going to come from. And just a fact that just in case you don't know, when you're listening to your audio on your computer, plug into the back of the motherboard. The jacks in the front don't always give the best sound because the ones in the back are coming directly from the motherboard and will give you your best sound. So just keep that in mind if you're ever doing that. Your sound maybe sounds a little bit off. This will improve it, all right? You're not listening to the case sound where maybe there's something a little bit off. This is coming directly from your motherboard and it will benefit you. So the other thing you got, other than your fan, is your front panel audios, okay? 
Okay, you found, where's where all your case cables from your, are going to plug in? So your PLED, your power, your reset, all that kind of good stuff. You have your um, COM debug, you have your clear CMOS, which is CORTC. Okay, I mentioned that in my last one of my other videos. That basically, if you want to clear CMOS, put a couple jumpers over that. Uh, you'll have to look it up exactly the process for that is, in case you never need it. Now, some motherboards will have the clear CMOS button, and you can just push it, or you can just remove the battery, all right? And then that'll do that as well, all right? So, those are important things to know, at least in my perspective. So, your premium Japanese capacitors are on the right hand side here, all right? And pretty much that's it as we work our way down. We have our trusted platform module here to plug one in if you need to. And so anyway, let's move on to the left-hand side of the board so I can show you that a bit more in detail as well. Okay, so on this side of the board, you really don't have much. You have your 24 pin for power, another USB 3.0 header here. Did I mention that before? Or was there two? Ah, this board has two, so that's kind of cool. This, yeah, don't see that very often. You have your USB Type-C on board. He doesn't have that for this case, so we won't be using it. For the build that I'm going to be doing, and uh, yeah, and another RGB over here. So let's see. Did I miss anything? Got one more side. Here we go. Let's switch it up to your power connectors for your CPU. Okay. So starting left to right, we have our CPU. We have a four pin and an eight pin. So if you want to overclock, you're going to have to plug in both. Most power supplies today are going to come with both. If they don't, make sure if you want to use that, you get one that does. You don't have to have both. If you're just going to use it for just everyday stuff and you're not overclocking, just using the 8-pin will get you by without any issues. You have your CPU fan here and another system fan header right there. And that's pretty much all on this side of the board. So lastly, we're looking at the back of the motherboard. Uh, the back plate on this doesn't normally come off at all. I believe you can buy the new ones now that you can put them on. And then, of course, all this would come off. Typically, you're not going to do that. And if you do do that, be aware that it'll void your warranty. So you can see all the traces for where your M.2s are going to go and all that kind of good stuff. Nothing spectacular there, of course, but some people like to know, well, how many standoffs am I going to need, you know? Now, this is an ATX motherboard, just so you're aware. So just a little additional information for those that might really want to know. Your display port supports up to 1.4, which is pretty typical. Uh, HDMI is 1.4 and also 2.0. Um, doesn't say anything about supporting anything beyond that. But, of course, you can get a max resolution out of your graphics card from the display port up to uh, 4096 by 2304. So just, to, again, these are all good things to know. If you have a 11 Gen processor uh, with a built-in uh, um, graphics then you'll be able to get up to 4k at 60 hertz apparently so that's pretty cool too all right so that's a pretty good overview of everything that's going to be on the motherboard if you have any questions or left anything out ask them in the comments and i will definitely get back to you all right everybody so that's a quick look at that motherboard i hope you like it uh i gotta get out of that habit i do that now and i don't know why i'm doing it I never used to do that anyhow if you like the video hit that like if you don't leave a comment if you have a question leave a comment and i will get back to you uh, if you're new here think it was subscribing uh hit that bell for notifications for videos as they come up and that'll let you see everything that's going on in the channel and of course you can search those playlists too to find out more um thanks for watching of course and uh hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something from it have a good day bye bye